بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله أما بعد Continuing inshallah with this part effects on consciousness and the thinking we said uh, the Quran uh, the first effect is to target the changing of ambitions and motivations the embrace of a new criteria and defining success and the development of a new pattern leading to tranquility and peace and we, we have kind of described this now the field of the action of the Quran of the teaching of the Quran is the human consciousness and soul is very important this. that's why the Quran is valid for every time for everyone for every space The Quran is not talking about, subhanAllah, I mean, the way to, to build buildings or the way to, uh, to, to, you know, to manage businesses. No, the Quran is talking about one field, it is the human soul. That's why, subhanAllah, is, is an everlasting word. So the field of action of the teaching uh, of the teaching of the Quran is the human consciousness and soul. When you uh, you know kind of reflect on such a statement I have said, then it leads to uh, the vision and concept of life. Are look, uh, this is what I meant to to, to say here. There's. Uh, I will read it to, to explain it more. If we said the field of the, uh, of the action, of the teaching of the Qur'an is the human mind, right? So in the human mind, there is, you know, conscience, thinking, and action. That's what the aqidah is going to have an impact on. So the vision and concept of life are cured with the aqidah. And this is what is going to instill spirituality. Why? Because everything changes in the mind. I'm going to give examples. Conscience and emotion are straightened with akhlaq. Ambition are oriented toward the high objective of the ultimate truth. These are profound points require reflection. So, the vision and concept, what is life? What is life for the companion before Islam? It was entertainment, right? Just live. This is life, our life. We live and we die. Just enjoy it. The happiest person who dies with the more toys, right? That's what they say. Uh, getting rich is the highest objective. Get rich or try dying. Or die trying. <laughs> I'm not good in it. Huh? So, so this is the vision and the concept that they have about life. So imagine this is, is going to... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, no, come here. I created you to live forever. That's the first thing. Now, the, the companion, before the coming of the Prophet the life will end at the grave. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Whoever went to the grave, that's it. He will never come back. The new vision of life, you are created to live forever. It changed your way of thinking or not? Is that the new way of life? So then you have a new vision of the existence, new vision of the world, view vision of your role in this world. It's all change. 
and that's what is going to be corrected by the aqidah then the conscience and the emotion is going to be different because what it uh, help you to become is like i want to be happy in that day if i'm going to be living for eternity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you there's only two homes that's what it comes in the quran a home of mercy and a home of the wrath of allah subhanahu wa i want to be in the home of the mercy then you're building a new emotion, new feeling. And the Qur'an was building you that. You're going to have a new role. You're going to feel important. You can change things. An action that you do, the Prophet ﷺ said, the good action you do, it has an impact on everything around you. If you teach good, even the fish in the ocean ask for your forgiveness. Right? Hadith Sahih. So you feel like you are important, you have a great role in the universe. You're not someone, you know, somebody who live and they have fun and this. No, you have someone, Allah knows you. Allah mentioned your name among his angels. It's different feeling. Imagine a, a noble, respected, loved uh, king. Yeah, he mentioned your name. Said, I like this uh, citizen. Well, the next day, you're going to find the whole, your house is, you know, surrounded by people of the news. He's the man who, or the, the, the woman that being mentioned by the king. So imagine you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of your, the kings, he mentioned your name. Well, this is totally different feeling. This is what the companion, companion they were, subhanAllah, experience, seeing. And who's telling them, them is the Prophet So everything they hear is yaqeen. It's not, there's no the struggle to believe. They already is yaqeen for them. They see it with their own eyes. If the Prophet Sallallahu he is the one who's telling them such a thing. When you said the akhlaq, straightened with the akhlaq, then... Uh, I'll, I'll give example, you know. People, for example, uh, before repent, before, many people, subhanAllah, they've been off the path. You find many things that in the time of jahili they love it. People, for example, they used to love hang out and, and uh, drink alcohol. They love such a thing. They go love going out and do things like, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide their hearts and everything, without that, that change of emotion, by the guidance, by the repentance, when they look back, when they see such a thing, they despise, they hate it. What changed that? Right? So this is what happening, that akhlaq becomes, becomes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. show you this ayah, look. In Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor on the believer. Qal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lakin Allah, look here what he said. But Allah has endeared to you the faith and has made it pleasing in your hearts and has made hateful to you disbelief defiance and disobedience it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make make you to hate something ugly and wrong right people will for example he enjoy talking about his own sins why because he he's pleased with such a thing you as a believer you hate such a thing what make you hate it is your belief is your creed is your feeling inside that being transformed by the light of the guidance. Fadlan min Allahi wa ni'mah. This is grace from Allah and his favor. And Allah is all known, all wise. The first effect of the Quran instill with its style of short and profound tone the values of the true vision of life. 
it deeply touches the conscience and transforms the emotion. We're going to take Al Mufassal, the, the Hizb, the part from Surah Qaf to the end of the Quran is called Salaf, is called Al Mufassal because there are short ayahs in every surah, short ayah. Let's read Al Adiyat together and try to imagine reading it for the first time. Let's go to Adiyat. These people, Allah talking to people who, who master the language. I want you to read it. Read it. والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا are you listening to the tone? SubhanAllah, this hit the deepest of the heart of the companion when they've been reading it. Short, it give you perspective of new meaning that you never heard before. Read, look. وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحَا By the racer or by the steed that ran with panting breath. This is the horses and strikes sparks of fire and scouring to the red are done straining up thereby uh, clouds of dust it's it's a scene of a description of scene and allah making uh, you know uh, taking an oath of it penetrating forth as one into the midst and after all that screen uh, you know an image and a scene of those horses going in the sake of Allah with this power, with this beauty, and with this rhythmic tone, he tell you, indeed, man is ungrateful. And you can say, I am ungrateful. <laughs> Very short, huh? And indeed he is to that a witness. وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ And very he is violent in the love of wealth. أَفَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْخُورِ This is the reality. This is the new vision of life. Here. Does he not know when that which in the grave is, is scattered abroad? But does he not know that when the contents of the grave is as scattered this is you see how they introduce the new vision of life the grave which is, is the end of journey of life becomes the beginning here and starting subhanallah the tone if you try to read it on your own the more you concentrate the more subhanallah it hitting in in the depth of your heart so here, look what, again, what I have said. Style of short, profound tone, the values of the true vision of life. It deeply touches the conscience and transforms the emotions. Imagine someone, subhanAllah, at the last breath of death, and you, you're trying to read that then you start to realize that the death is the beginning of the journey of your true life. When the companion they read the surah, what it becomes important, what it becomes objective, and that within the breast is obtained. It's going to become like you raise for money or you raise for the action that is going to be contained in your breast. And then here, the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he'll introduce an attribute that not only he knows, he's khabir, 
Indeed, the Lord with them that day is fully acquainted. Now imagine the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala in that environment been introduced with such words never been heard before in this style when they know poetry when they know but never heard such a thing with an amazing mesmerizing abundant meanings introducing a new vision of life a new reality it shakes the depth of their soul it changed everything they know about life Everything. Al-Ghashi. Just small examples. Huh? You can go all this short surah and then you understand why the Mecca surah they were short in the beginning. Because they have a mission, they have, they have, subhanAllah, a message. Look, the Madani in Medina, there are long ayat, long surahs. You've been already in the Iman, you took your practice, now the orientation, the cleansing, the, the, the building, the organization, the ahkam, the thing that comes as issue after the Iman, all of that. But in the beginning, the true vision is changing. Subhanallah is restriction of the whole being. هل أتاك حديث الغاشية? Had the story reached you of the overwhelming event? <laughs> now is a question. The Prophet does not know the answer. But if I ask you a question that you don't even know, say, do you know the, has the story reached you of the overwhelming event? You will be like eager to know what this overwhelming event. So look the first introduction of the answer. قَالَ وُجُوهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ some face in the day will be humiliated. I mean, this explanation is the translator he added. Huh? So it does not exist. When the, the companion they read, some face in the day will be humiliated. Now, look the, the new perspective in, in, the, in the vision. There's humiliation in this, in this uh, overwhelming event. which is drawing a new, look, instilling a new ambition, a new type of, you try to avoid. Amilatun nasibah tasla naran hamiya tusqa min aynin aniya. Again, this is, I want to focus on the, the small, the tone and short, you know, the short side, the short ayah. Tusqa min aynin aniya, laysa lahum ta'amun illa min dari'ah. No food will there be for them but a poisonous thorny plant. Now, dari'ah. Look the, the words, one of the uh, uh, eloquency in the Arabic language that the sound define the meaning. If you say, for example, uh, uh, something laying, we say something, you know, kind of uh, smooth, soft, say laying, tis the lamb, al yeah, one noon, all of them are, are thin letters. Uh, food of hellfire is named Dariya. One of the heaviest letter in the Arabic language, Dad. Can you imagine, say, what do you have in the menu? You said, I have Dariya. I said, except that, do you have something else? Because the name is scary. <laughs> so, even the sound of Laysa Lahum Ta'amun, even though he does not know what is Dariya. 
they do not have food except daria. The, the tone, the rhythm, the sound, all of it, subhanAllah, is miraculous nature. It is the Qur'an. Then he gives you the description of the food. But they say, لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة Look, the, the part of ناعمة and if you read farther, راضية, عالية All of it, it trimes in a very light way, in, in a way that opens the chest and the breast. And there's a lot to say about this ayah. But just to draw your attention in, in the analysis that we are doing. Even the internet does not even work. This is the first effect of the Quran. So, introducing the true vision of life. If you see with Surah Al Adiyat, death is the beginning of the new journey of life, of the true life. The second effect of the Qur'an, the style of the Qur'an in shifting the direction of the ambitions from the one which go on to perish to the one everlasting. I mean, the one I'm talking about the life. Anything. People, they love money. They say, are you going to take your money to the grave? It's a new vision of life. Said no. Then should you not accumulate what is going to last after the grave? So the thinking from thing that which going to perish to the to the thing that is everlasting, from an anxious and worrying way of thinking to way filled with hope and joy. That's what the Quran is conferring. Example description of the faces in the day of judgment. Uh, Surah Abbas. Let's go to Surah Abbas and just give you the example. Abbas. Again, read like the first time. That's how to help to reflect. Look, uh, uh, one of the intellectual way of tarbiyah. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, read here. فليانظر الإنسان إلى طعامه. Let then let man look at his food. Intellectual. Allah inviting you to reflect. Look at your food. For that we pour forth. Then when you look at the food. The plate that it served to you, just think the process that it went through to come to your table. That's what Allah is asking you. For that we, uh, so look, so how we pour it down water in torrents, then we broke open the earth, splitting it with sprouts, uh, and uh, caused to grow within its grain, and all this type of fruit and plants. Huh? So you say, olives and dates, from who? From Allah. Not from the grocery store. It's, it gives you deeper understanding, right? Bigger picture. You become a totally different person. Now look. How this is the new reality, new vision of life. At length, when there comes the deafening noise. This is a new thing. The day shall a man flee from his brother? From his mother and father? From his spouse and children? It's not the new vision of life. Your mother will be hugging, you don't, you subhanAllah, you love your mother, you love your brother, you love your father, your children, you're going to run away from them.
why every man that day will have enough to make him careless of others. Wujuhun, some faces that day will be bright. I'll ask you a question. Why the emphasis on the faces? Bahikatum mustabshira, laughing, rejoicing. And other face that day will be dust stained. Darkness will cover them. Those are the disbelievers, the wicked ones. Let's uh, have the screen on the good part. Why faces? Huh? Uh, no. No, why Allah talk about faces? Why the emphasis of faces? Why he, just, he didn't say like, you know, they were like glowing faces, they saw, they were rejoicing. What is the main, subhanAllah, the most important part in the human being? His face, right? How many people, everyone who love this, you know, those, they have their idols, through idols, idols, the celebrities and everything, yeah? Subhanallah, uh, people, they choose their role models out of the joy they see in their faces. Huh? For example, someone is winning a game. They see the joy in the first face of that person, laughing and jumping. He want to be like that person. It's natural. Then you want to copy the action of that person. That's why everyone dreamed to be famous. Did you see if, for example, all the famous people, they will be like, you know, look sad at the TV every time, look sad. You think everybody wants to be like that? They brush them, they make them laugh, they make them think, they give them awards. And you see that laughing, joyful faces, glowing faces, that what, subhanAllah, stuck in the heart. So people, they want to be like them, they want to do like them, to get that thing that they cannot understand with that joy in that faces. So it becomes, subhanAllah, role model, examples in the society today is based on those glowing faces. When they want to have a celebrity, whatever they call them, you know, they always get them bad pictures, right? They start to gossip, look at this person. But when they are like, subhanAllah, to be that role model, they have always those glowing faces. The glowing faces of winning, the glowing faces of triumphing, the glowing faces of victory, that what everybody loves is embedded in our inner nature. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our nature. Do you want the glowing faces with the glowing that is going to perish or glowing faces in the day when everyone is running from each other? New ambitions. In Surah Al Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you something the most amazing and the best thing that anyone, uh, I mean, the best thing that a human being can uh, have in this uh, life, in this existence, not in this life. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and comes to read this ayah. Again, wujuhun. Huh? Some faces that they will be beam in brightness and beauty. Looking at their Lord. <laughs> uh, 
Imagine Abu Bakr reading this for the first time. He brought five from the Mubashirin Birjal. So this is when we reflect on the book of Allah and, and we read deeply in this ayat and deeply with our heart, not, to, not with knowledge, because this is, because we've been influenced by things in our society that Allah mentioned in the Quran. But if you certainly believe in what we read, then your ambition will change. And this is what happened to the companion, and this is how the Quran molded the minds, the consciousness, as we have mentioned in the beginning, in the introduction of the class. Anchoring in the soul images which, uh, which the deep self adores. I mean, the deep of our self love these images. So when you go to sleep after reading the Quran, you're seeing these faces glowing uh, and, and smiling and rejoicing. That's what do you want. Then you're going to stand up or wake up for Salat al-Fajr with a great, you know, be fresh. Why? Because you're seeking such a thing. The other aspect the, in the effect of the Quran is description of paradise. Enlarge the horizon of hope. Description of hellfire, the boost for steadiness, actually steadfastness, on the path with the threat and fear. The fear to fall into the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the third effect of the Qur'an. The, the Qur'an teach another new aspect in the life of the companion, which is uh, as sunan al-ilahi. They, they learn that everything is within, is functioning within Allah's will. Nothing occur or happen outside Allah's will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set a law in the universe as subhanallah the uh, Allah said the law that govern the nature from you know all what you uh, witness and know in chemistry and everything that's the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same Allah made for the law for the human being. For example, the divine law of the joyful life, new definition of happiness. People, they, you know, the definition of having money, having big families, having all of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed it for the believer. It became something else. I'll give you one ayah as an example. Um, the ayah for example in Surah Al-Nahl I'll show it to you Here. Look, read this. Whatever you have will end, but what Allah has is lasting, and we will surely give those who were patient their reward according to the best of what they used to do. Here. Whoever works righteousness, man or woman, and has faith, verily to him will we give a new life, a life that is good and pure. Uh, he said, cause him to live a good life. In the other tones, they say, and we will give him a good life. In the reward with respect, contentment, and lawful provision. And we shall pay them certainly reward in proportion to the best of what they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you there's the law of joy 
in this life and the hereafter is to act in righteousness. Equal men and women. This type of ayah, this type of a new uh, rebuilding the identity will shift one's ambition and race instead of having money, high status in the society has people there to something else. It also decreases one's longing and love for the money. And that's it, the process of the true purification. Uh, the divine law of victory and succession. So victory not anymore based on the number, on the uh, number of army, I mean of soldiers, on amount of weapon, not anymore. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he has another law. Uh, give you just to to show you the, the the proof and to Inshallah, I'll find it. Here, in, in this story, here, look. And after they crossed the, the river, قال, uh, then when they had crossed it along with those who believed, they said, there's no power for us today against Goliath and his soldiers. But those who were certain that they would meet Allah said, how many small company has overcome a large company by permission of Allah? It's a new perspective. And this is not perspective and option. This is the reality that how it happens. So when they reading such a thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the victory to the Prophet and the companion in Badr. Because Allah governed the world, not anybody else. The fourth effect of the Quran. Strengthening of the power of patience, firmness, sharing and giving. Just a note, I introduce it here. The language of the Quran is the Iman. Leading to action flourished on the foundation of Yaqeen. All what we have said, we can summarize it in this sentence. The Quran is talking to you with the Iman. That's why Allah in the beginning of the Quran He said this is guidance for those who has taqwa. So one who has iman because the Quran is talking to you based on the belief. And when you act upon it, you act upon it with yaqeen, then when you have that certainty as the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala alayhim, He gave them everything they asked for. And everything Allah promised them. Then it comes the trials that we're going to study some of them. Why, you know, uh, we'll take, inshallah, when I read these stories uh, of the companion going through persecution, going through, uh, subhanAllah, uh, like Bilal, like Khabib ibn al-Ard, the Prophet ﷺ is being hurt, 
uh, bothered, uh, you know, he, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, he, he went through all this uh, hardship and his companion too. Why? These are trials. And these trials, we can summarize the uh, impact and the objective or the, of it is cleansing and preparing. The second one is knowing the reality of the self. The more you go through trial, it strengthens your endurance and make one know his own self. Knowing the reality of the worldly life. This life is not Jannah at all. Anyone who is seeking the bliss of Jannah in this life, he is ignorant. He is far rooted from the reality. The high objectives of the Tarabi of the Quran, and uh, by the way, this is all the study to, to help us understand how the companion changed in Dar al Arqam ibn Abi al Arqam. So, this is the preparation to come out to the world. They came out in Mecca and they ready to face the, subhanAllah, the hardship and those, uh, you know, the, uh, how they were uh, harsh, uh, unjust. And, 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 and hard on them, the people of Quraysh. But they believe they were ready. Why? Because there the Quran transformed them to have that strong, uh, you know, ability to face the challenges. The high object, the first one, is to elevate human being from the low to the highest of the rank possible. And the low is Allah, the, the low, this word is the lowest. قَالْ إِنَّ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي Huh? إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرَ دُخْرَ سبحان الله طيب خير من شاء Peace of the soul by connecting his existence with the existence of the universe. How this happened is like you become, you know, a person who has the big picture. You have a role in this whole universe. It brings you peace. And then liberate the self by relating his, her ambitions to the ultimate truth of the creation. You're not anymore restricted to the people of Quraysh who's going to, subhanAllah, persecute them, or to the society are here, one's ambition, one's thoughts is greater and higher than that. And he's gonna live for eternity. This life is better test. And which is give the pride and honor by being the servant of Allah. Just remember Bilal and the, the torture and he's saying Ahadun Ahad. One Allah is one. They get hold of his body, but no one could touch his heart. Any question? He wasn't a slave. Was a slave? Yeah. yeah. He was a slave and his master was called Umayyah ibn Khalaf. Yeah, that's why they tortured because they didn't do that for Abu Bakr and Uthman because those are free and they have their family protecting them, which is one, as we're going to study, one of the customs. It's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it to defend the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, Abu Talib protecting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was not only Abu Talib, he loved the Prophet. 
but it was a custom because all Banu Hashim, they were protecting the Prophet, even though they didn't believe in his message. Why? Because the custom that they have anchored in something it has like, uh, you know, no one will break it because like they go against their own identity, their own honor. If they let one of them being touched, uh, being touched by any of the other tribes. The trials, uh, just to, to give you some idea and glimpse, you refer to the story of the prophets in the Quran. So when the companion, they read it, like, I have a whole page about, uh, we'll do it next time, sure. So reading, for example, the story of Musa, reading the story of Noah, reading the story of Shu'aib, this is who are this prophet and the believers to the companion? Who are they? What they represent for them? For example, you read the story of Noah, and this is actually, we're going to say it. But I will uh, share it now. If you read the story of Noah and the believers with Noah, who are they for you? What is the relation between you and them? With the new vision of life, they are your own brother and sister. They should be closer to you than anybody else around. So in the reality, when you read the Quran, those people are your family. Those are your ancestors. That's how the believer, they, how the companion, they look at their brother, they suffered. So I'm ready to suffer because my brother, they already went through this. The people with Nuh, they are your family. Truly, your, those are your ancestors. As I always say, people, they go to ancestry.com to find their ancestors. Your ancestors are in the Quran. Nuh is your grandfather. Ibrahim is your grandfather. Ismail. The believers with Hud, with Salah, those are your family. Says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, You'll be happy when you're reading the story. Huh? When you read the story, the companion, they're so rejoicing. And we have the Prophet and we are the believers. Allah is going to save the Prophet and save us. As he did for our brothers. That's the Quran. The الثمرة في النفس الثمرة في النفس I mean الثمرة is all what we have shared together what is going to have as a result in oneself purification uh, hope إصلاح so he will have a vocation to correct, to change. Tawada, uh, modesty, being humble. Someone who put his effort and work hard, sincerely, loves to do good, and race and compete for the good. And these are kind of the signs or the marks of the meaning of the submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this how the company they were with when Allah ta'ala Ali. Result and principles. From all this comes to these three result. I mean First one, جعلوا رضا الله سبحانه وتعالى نصب عينيه وغاية ما يتمنى. Make the pleasure of Allah سبحانه وتعالى his main focus and the highest he can wish and long for. إذا 
If I show you a story, amazing story, is in the Quran. All of you, you know. But if you read it now, with the with the insight and the eye that we, after this analysis, look. The magician of Pharaoh. You know them, right? I want you to read this with the new insight or refreshed insight after this study. They want to defeat Musa. Look what they did. So they threw their ropes and their staffs and said, by the might of Pharaoh, indeed, it is we who are predominant. The might of Pharaoh. They give an, an attribute of a divine. The next ayah, Musa throw his, the ayah after, they become, they become Muslim. Right? When they become Muslim and they prostrate, their new ambition, their new ambition change. Look the ambition, three A's above. Look their ambition. They said, and when the magician arrived, they said to Pharaoh, is there indeed for us a reward if we are the predominant? That's the ambition. Then he said, he said, yes, and you should then verily be of those who brought near to my servant. You're going to be the closest to the emperor. So that's why they called Pharaoh the mighty. <laughs> now they changed by Allah's guidance. They accepted Islam and they want to sujood. What became their ambition? Here. <laughs> After he said, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to do this. Look the ambition. Uh, respect his sister, dear brother. Indeed, we aspire that our Lord will forgive us our sins. See the ambition? That's the great wish that they have. And this is the most amazing transformation of the soul in the history of humankind. Uh, in the Quran, Allah mentioned it three times in the Quran. Magician, you know, charlatans, that's what it means. Spells and black magic and everything change into this. Furthermore, this is, I said, the result. Huh? Look, Ibrahim, the same, in the same surah. Look, Ibrahim, what he said. The same surah. Talking about Allah, giving his attribute. And who will cause me to die and then will bring me to life. Look what he said. And who I hope will forgive me my fault on the day of judgment. That's the wish of Ibrahim. And that is the wish of the companion. That's the ambition. That's the dream. That's based on the new vision of life that they learn from the Quran. The second, وَضْعُ إِرَادَةِ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ إِرَادَتِهِ To put the will of Allah, the command of Allah above one's wish, one's intention, one's want. This is the companion. The third one, الدوام على التطهر من الرجس, as we said, to persevere on always being cleansed and avoiding impurity. An impurity that comes to the heart, that's the impurity of the rich, that spoils the heart or cause the disease of the heart.
I'll stop here. I don't want to keep you long in this stand. If you have any question, you are welcome, inshallah ta'ala. And inshallah, we'll continue and finish next time. If, I don't know if, uh, if it's okay, we'll, I'll ask you a week before, think about it. To extend the class next week to finish, it's okay? Huh? Okay, good. Don't say at nine, everybody look at that quote. Any question? Can you have a break after that? Yes. Uh, uh, this is going to be for me. But uh, the next class is going to start March the 10th. And uh, it is... Uh, what every student of knowledge need to know about the Islam, the system of Islam. It is an in-depth study of Dawah. Fiqh Dawah. Any question? There is going to be an exam and then a week for registration for the next class and then the 10th we start, inshallah. Yes, yes. Uh, guide. No, all the knows all what you need. The all what you need. And uh, did you get the, uh, the schoology? Yes. The event that I have read, or I will be reading, all of them, they are in, uh, for those registered, they are here in. Uh... So you have the. Islam and the World for the Introduction, Noble Life of Dr. Salabi, and uh, the Sealed Nectar, and the Notes. I will add uh, number three, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair.